This is the Bastel Instruments Timber Dual Waveform Lumberjack. It is a really flexible wave shaper. You can get a lot of different tones out of a pretty darn small module and has quickly become one of my favorites. First I'm going to show off what it can do, and then I'm going to show in more detail what it's actually doing to the waveform going through it. It's divided into two halves, one and two. One, the left side, is a wave driver, basically a saturation circuit, and side two is a wave folder. Each one has its own dedicated output. There is also a shared output that goes through a crossfade control that can fade between the left and right side, in addition to a couple of other tricks I'll show you later. Right now I have it tuned over to the wave driver side. I've chosen the soft wave driver option. And right now I have the additional wave folder set to no, it's out of the circuit. As I increase the shape depth, we'll go into a nice soft clipping. Until we end up basically in a square wave. hard drive option basically just goes into clipping much sooner. A little bit more rounding when you go into the soft saturation. And you see the nice rounded edges in the square, but then we go into a full clipped square wave from the input as well. I'll go back down to soft for now. There is an intermediate mid setting and I'll show you that in a second. Now, a little twist on the wave driver is that it can engage a bit of the wave folder on the right side. I'll go to a low folding amount. And now as I increase shape, not only will it saturate, you'll see it start to fold in on itself. So we still end up close to a square wave, but with an additional bit of detail there in the zero crossing, it adds some more high harmonics compared to no folding. Standard square wave, some additional really high harmonics. And then the high fold amount basically changes the threshold of where it starts folding. You hear it already has a much stronger sound. So it ends up close to a square wave, but now that little spike at the zero crossing is even stronger, so the high harmonics are even more prominent. High, low. The drive section really interacts with this. That's soft drive, intermediate drive, hard drive. I don't notice too much of a difference between soft and medium when I'm at the no wave folding section, but it really comes in handy when I do have some folding going on. Quite a few different tones there. Go back to its basic settings, pull the shape down, which will go pretty close to silence. You can kind of use it as a VCA. You can go ahead and run your oscillators through a VCA into this and it'll go back to silence, but basically shape sets your lowest level of folding or clipping or your starting timbre. Let's go ahead and crossfade over now to the wave folder side. It has three options. OK, No, and KO. I know, kind of funny. Basically, OK is your classic Buchla Surge wave folder. It's a five-stage wave folder where it folds back in on itself multiple times before going into a saturation circuit. A little additional fold there at the highest levels. As I modulate that, you get that real lovely, plasticky, rubbery sound you get out of Buchholz and Surges. That West Coast sound. Now, wave folders traditionally work best on simple input waveforms like triangle and sine waves. What Bastel's done is they've created some alternates if you have a complex input waveform, like a digital waveform, or even a sawtooth. The no setting disengages most of the fold sections, just does one final fold and saturation. It almost goes to a really thin pulse when you really crank it up all the way. So it's a very simple sweep compared to the normal five-stage folder. But let's go ahead and compare that with a more complex waveform. Right now I'm basically attenuating the triangle wave from my disting. 
but let's switch over to the sawtooth out of the mother. A normal folder would add quite a few harmonics and quite dramatic sweeps. A lot of cancellations going on there. The idea of the no folder is it's gentler and better for more complex waveforms. Very simplified, clear sweep there. And then the KO version adds some additional kinks to the waveform. Bastel says it's a bit metallic sounding. I actually like its strong bass. Right around there's that wooden sound I really like. We'll switch back over to the triangle wave output. So that's KO, no, and OK. That's okay to go ahead and manually sweep the shape control when you've got lots of different modulation possibilities. But commonly, you'll use a spare envelope generator, even an attack decay or an attack release, to change that shape depth. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn my shape depth all the way down to zero, plug in a CV, use this as my starting sound, and start increasing the envelope amount. Again, that's that classic Surge or Buchla Wavefolder sound on simpler waveforms. With the No and Chaos settings, it's not quite as dramatic. It's a little closer to, you know, a resonant low-pass filter sound. That also works over on the wave driver side. It's not quite as dramatic because the clipping is very simple. A little bit of simple overdrive. But again, when you engage a little bit of wave folding, it gets more interesting. It holds that bass really nicely when you do this. Let me talk about that bass for a second, because a lot of different wave shapers really thin out a sound. I like how the Bastille is capable of keeping nice body inside the sound, because I like bass. Another nice feature on some wave folders, including the Bastille, is the symmetry feature. That biases the waveform up or down as it goes through the folding circuit, and as particularly second harmonics, which are associated with open tube instruments like flutes, and more importantly, tube amplifiers. The edge condition there gets really thin and nasty. And the inverse symmetry side, pushing down rather than up, has a different sound. side. Well, again, it's not quite as dramatic unless you have a little bit of folding in here. And what's really nice is that you have modulation inputs for most of these. For example, I can take something like an LFO output. Where's my triangle output from my LFO? And run that, say, to the symmetry control. When you do that, symmetry knob becomes an attenuverter. Basically, you have a positive voltage normal to this jack. And I can adjust the amount. And my LFO sweeps to the different symmetry settings. This is a slow sweep. I can go into audio rates. I 
and I found that all the control inputs on the timber indeed go into FM rates. You get some really complex sounds. Back that out for now. Now it's also fun to change the crossfade using things like envelopes, LFOs, mod wheels, etc. I can go ahead and make it a performance control. Grab my mod wheel output here. Put that to the crossfade input, which is right here. Has its own antenna inverter right here. Use mod wheel. Go between the wave driver side and the wave folder side. But another thing I really like using is something like the velocity output for my keyboard to change that mix. I went ahead and programmed a soft note, a hard note, a soft note, a hard note in this arpeggio. And I'll take the keyboard output, number three here, and center up my initial crossfade. You hear it's adding interesting accents now to the sound. As it crossfades between the left side and the right side of the timbre. You can use another line in your sequencer to create those syncopations if you want it. out there. Get a lot of motion to that sound. Pack out the LFO. Go ahead and unpatch it for now, actually. Um, unpatch my velocity for now. There's a couple more tricks up a timbre sleeve. For one, this crossfader has a couple of options. It does not have to go between the left and right sides. It can go between an external input and your right side, the wave holder side. Now defaults to using the normal input to be the left side of the crossfader. So I can go from my triangle wave to my wave folded side. And I can go ahead and plug in an external input here if I wanted to go between a different waveform or different source and the wave folder output from timber. I'll switch back to going between wave driver in the folder. There's also a few different jumpers on the back to go ahead and AC or DC couple timber. Depends whether or not you care about it creating a bit of a DC offset as it goes to other modules. It also has a phase switch. Let's go ahead and back off my initial waveform here. And this jumper decides whether or not the left side, the wave driver, is inverted. When it's inverted, you get a more dramatic phase cancellation, particularly in the fundamental frequency, as you switch over to the folder side. Here it almost cancels out there until the folder comes in. In phase, out of phase. Thinner sound when it's out of phase, a more full sound when it's in phase. Let's go ahead and stop this arpeggio for a moment and look in a little bit more detail at exactly what timber is doing to the waveforms coming through it. Namely, it gives you control over whether you're adding odd harmonics or even harmonics. And that's where symmetry and the fold comes in. I'm going to switch over to the right side, back off my initial shape here, pull my envelope out for now. What the wave folder does is strengthen odd harmonics. I'll go ahead and hit a low C, drone the VCA so it stays constant. Back out the fold amount. Now we get pretty close to the harmonics of our basic triangle waveform there, the input wave. So I start increasing the shape amount. It starts sweeping through different harmonics being strengthened and weakened. I see some of the odd harmonics in particular really spike up here. Has quite a few harmonics of this high setting. Now what's interesting is in the early stages that fundamental gets weakened through some of the folds. Right around here. See the fundamental goes down in strength. Then it's restored to its normal original strength. If 
you want a less severe effect, in particular one to keep that fundamental intact, to keep strong bass, that's where the NO and KO settings have been really handy. KO in particular always keeps that fundamental strong. So it always has a nice strong bass sound here. Which will add some high harmonics. Without losing your fundamental, acts much like a resonant low pass filter. Go back to the normal folder here. Now, whereas the folder works on odd harmonics, so go ahead and get back to a simpler setting here. Symmetry and basically making a waveform asymmetrical, where the top half is different than the bottom half adds even harmonics, the second harmonic in particular. Some open tube instruments like flutes have strong second harmonics. Tube amplifiers are known for adding second harmonic, which gives that octave doubling sound. Let's go ahead and bend the symmetry. See the second harmonic grow in strength there? To the point where it actually is stronger in some settings than the fundamental harmonic. If you want to add a little bit more body and warmth to a sound, symmetry can help you do that. Now there's one more interesting control in timber, and it's voltage control over feedback, where it takes some of the output and puts it back to the input. This has quite unpredictable results. I'll take my mod wheel, it's a nice zero to five volt range, take it to this feedback CV, and it's kind of unpredictable what it's going to do to the waveform. You can add harmonics, and then just start glitching out on you. very interactive with the rest of your settings, such as the shape control. So if you'd like to explore with glitched out sounds, very careful additions of CV to the feedback input can get you some really strange effects. Something like a really slow random voltage or LFO to that would be pretty cool. So that's the Bastille Timber. Really nice wave folder, particularly for beefing up simple waveforms, and it layers together very nicely with other waveforms in your instrument. Like here's just the sawtooth out of the Mother 32. Let's mix in some of the wave folder sound. A bit of filter sweep. A bit longer decay here. It's a nice addition to a simple voice. Just sawtooth, just wave folder, some layering. That helps you keep fundamental and other harmonics from cutting out as the wave folder goes through its gyrations. If I had to pick just one wave folder that I was allowed to keep, it'd be the timber. It's small, lots of sweet spots, lots of sounds, I'm pretty happy with it.